Hey guys, this is Casual Nerdhammer.net, and I'm bringing you round two of the doubles tournament I played uh, about a week and a half ago now. And uh, we're playing elves, Alan and myself, and uh, we're playing against a Vanguard, a Varanger list. And this is the list that I said when we, when we first talked about this tournament. Like, this is the list we should make. Uh, we didn't really have the models. We probably would have had to borrow some stuff. But uh, we went with elves instead. But uh, let's take a look, see how it goes. You can see the pillage markers on the table. Um, terrain was pretty interesting this time. So our uh, our opponents brought uh, these are forests, and uh, they decide to, that they're going to run with forests and instead of swamps. We we figured they had a lot of flying threats and that we might not be able to hold them up as much. Uh, we decided to block all of their forests with buildings to to make it a little bit harder for them to you know sneak up behind the forest and and, and get into the forest before we can start shooting. Um, I don't know if this was the best move. I, I think we should have just stuck to our game plan and uh, kept the swamps. You know, maybe maybe countered all the forest with a swamp on the other side. So once they go into the forest, the, you know, they're gonna uh, there's gonna be another six or so inches that they're that they're hung up on. But um, but this is what we decided to do. So on their side, uh, they have a king on a chimera, a unit of dogs, a unit of blood sworn that has herges. Uh, coming back thing another unit of blood swarm which has the other herge just coming back thing um, there's a unit of fallen back here another king on chimera and uh, just a troop of knights that might be a regiment that might be a regiment of knights I'm not 100 percent sure um, they get blasted pretty early and another unit of dogs so uh, their deployment the idea was we we put <laughs> this was our marker we threw one way over there because everything was so heavy on this side and we thought um, we have some flying threats that we can we can get over there. Uh, there's another marker. I'll show it on the other side. I think there's one behind this behind this uh, forest here, like in between the forest and the house, and then three here. And I think there's there's another one behind this building, like right in here. Um, so our deployment, we I feel like we should have stuck a little heavy on this right side, um, just to counter what they're doing. But we kind of spread out just a little bit because of that loop marker. Um, probably would have better served us to move that move the suit marker into our area a little bit, uh, but we didn't know what their we felt that their king up here needed to be on the right side of the table. So just to counter him a little bit and force him in, um, that's how we kind of set up here. Uh, all the way down, it's our troop of palace guard. There's our dragon, uh, another unit of dracon riders, another dragon. There's our palace guard regiment. And we got one of the archer units tucked in behind the woods here. This one staggered back just a little bit because of how quick their range is. Um, we, I mean, we probably could have tucked back even further here, uh, except for this forest. This forest was kind of a pain for its location. Um, but yeah, so that's the way it goes. Our mages and uh, the green lady and our other dracon unit over here. So turn one, uh, we get the first turn and we decide to push up. We do start shooting. Uh, I think we shoot at both dog units. Uh, this is how we move up on the side. We waver this dog unit and then we we smash the other the other unit. So uh, that's not too bad. Getting the, getting their trap out of the way. I think uh, Alan and I kind of went back and forth. I kind of wanted to go right after one of their kings, but um, he he thought better of of it by getting the uh, getting the dogs off the table. That's their other Hersia right there. So. Yep, that's the that's pretty much the first turn. Yep, the waiver dog unit and the other dog unit killed. Uh, so that's not bad. And let's uh, see what they do. So their turn two, or their turn one, uh, they push their king and Khmer up into the woods here. Here, Herge is towing the woods, and the fallen push up in front of the bloodsworn, and looks like that. So uh, we, you know, we expected this. They're going to be pushing up pretty hard, trying to get into our archers. And if they get stuck on the archers for a little bit, that's great. If not, um, we really need to get our flying threats in flanking positions so that uh, we can we can threaten these blood swarm. But you know, with the Herger rule, if they can come back to life, I, I mean, this is this is a brutal list for for this tournament. Uh, our turn two, and that's an overall of the board. Uh, we decided to put the Palace Guard regiment up as bait um, just to protect the archers and try to get another round of shooting in. 
Uh, as you can see, like Hirsch is definitely going to be able to get in next turn. The King's going to be able to get in next turn. The Knights are probably, I think we just backed these guys out of range of the Knights um, just to buy us some time there. Uh, we decided to take the Dracons into the King on Chimera and we positioned the other dragons like such. Um, they ended up reforming the dogs face this way, which we assume they're going to be going after token with that dogs. Uh, we decided to push a troop of Palace Guard up into this woods, and they're going to hold that objective. Uh, so we're pretty sure that this these guys could, could can hold this. Um, I, I was having thoughts of sending them up into this objective if they go pretty much um, unnoticed. So their turn two, yeah, we didn't break their king on command or anything like that. Um, you know, minus one hit going through the woods, and we lose our thunder stars. Blah blah blah. Uh, they decide to throw the, their king on a chimera into this uh, uh, archer unit, and Hershey goes into the other archer unit. Um, so that's gonna kill our shooting for at least for a while, <laughs> if not forever. Uh, and they were deciding what to do here. Uh, they were looking at possibly taking the fallen into the archers too. You know, kind of skirting around these guys. But I don't think they do. I think they decide to hold like that. Um, this Herja goes into uh, our our uh, dragon rider over here, which ah, that's unfortunate. It's really going to pin him down. Uh, and their king goes back to into our dracon riders. And over here, yeah, six wounds to these archers, three wounds from Herja, and these guys get wavered. <laughs> so they need box cars. They got box cars. Um, yeah, it's unlucky. But not that the archers are going to be doing too much over here. Yeah, I moved these palace guard um, out of the woods just so that Hershey can't see him. And here's the mistake that I don't think costs us a game, but uh, is this a bad mistake to make. So I thought, hey, why don't we use this breath weapon to get these dogs? We can just back this guy up as far as he could. He still has line of sight. All great and everything, except that he is disordered and can't shoot his breath weapon. So uh, instead of going back into her and, and you know, doing this to her, we make this fatal mistake. And I feel awful because it was my suggestion. Um, I thought it was just a would have been a slick way to to get those dogs dead. But uh, yeah, I messed that up big time. Um, so you see there's four wounds on, on that dragon. Uh, him going back into Dracon Riders. I think Hershey even flying. No, Hershey's not here yet. Um, but yeah, so six wounds on a Dracon. So we really got to get a heal, but our heal is too far away. Uh, we decide to throw our dragon up over their lines. Uh, it's going to take us a turn to turn them around. But, I mean, at this point, the, the threat is real on the side. And we need to be threatened to rear without any, uh, any other threat problems. We decided to take our Dracon Riders in through the swamp and hold up these Bloodsworn. Um, again, I'm not sure we we made the greatest greatest choice there, but uh, we did what we had to do to try to try to block up these lines a little bit. We sent our Palace Guard into the other Bloodsworn. Um, again, just trying to hold up their lines. We know it's going to take them a little time to get through our archers with their with two with their two characters there. I'm hoping that uh, you know we can get our dragon turned around and, and threaten these Bloodsworn from the rear. Uh, their turn, yeah, we only did a couple wounds there, a couple wounds here. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. So, they decide to take the Fallen into the Knights, or the, the Archers, and they decide to move Hersia. Uh, she comes into the rear of the Dracon Riders. Um, so, that's the benefits of having an individual. And this side, yeah, Hershey goes back into there, and his knight goes back into the Dracon Riders. That's going to be pretty rough for us. Uh, after combat, this unit is wavered again, and got some wounds on these guys. Um, this dragon, I don't think he got wavered. Uh, I think these guys are wavered, though. I think the Dra Dracon Riders are wavered. So, yeah, <laughs> that was brutal. After combat, we lose the... Uh, the regiment of palace guard we lose our dracon riders and our gambit with the dragon um didn't work so <laughs> that's, that's all unfortunate this was the turn that alan and i looked at each other and we we're just like okay we need to conserve points we got to get any points we can we're not winning this game in any way so looking at how to conserve points we feel that we can get this objective and we can we can probably get this objective um if wait how do how are we going to do this i don't know 
somehow we need to at least hold as many objectives and deny them as many as we possibly can. We're thinking these two might go our way if we can find a find a way to get this dragon over, blah, blah, blah. And that's actually what we start to set up here. Um, immediately we decide, okay, let's bring this dragon out. There's no way he's taken on his blood sworn on, on his own, but he's fast enough that he can get away. So what we do, we fly him this way to threaten the rear of this guy in case... Um, in case something happens, maybe we waver him with the Dracon Riders going back in. Um, we know Herja's just going to beat up on our dragon here. There's nothing else we can do. We can just hope to hold Herja there for a little while. Um, now, there's another marker here, which once the Dracons are gone, we're not going to be able to contest. So we're thinking that, you know, we're going to lose this marker, we're going to lose this one, and there's another one here. So there's going to be uh, three or four markers that they're going to be able to get. And we're going to hope to get two, or at least not let them get more than four. So that's kind of, that's kind of the plan. So um, not much our archers can do here. Uh, this might even be their turn. I'm not 100% sure. Um, archers go into him. You know, it's that's just the way the, the lines are shaping up. Uh, over here, yeah, I'm not sure what that's showing. So their turn four. Yep, they're going back into our archers, going to try to uh, try to take care of them. And they're repositioning their Bloodsworn. Um, their Bloodsworn here, it's it's awkward, but they're actually outside of three. They really have to get up in the woods to be three inches away um, from that marker. So right now they don't have... It's contested with the, uh, the Dracons, but... Actually, it's ours with the Dracons, but, you know, that time will tell. Uh, Fallen's going back in. They should be able to clean them up pretty soon. And over here, they position their dogs up against that marker. Um, I'm th I brought the palace guard out because I wanted to threaten these dogs. I thought the dogs probably don't kill them if they charge in. And if they charge in, they're going to be away from that marker. So that's points for us, or at least point denial for us. And um, Or if the palace guard can get over there. I mean, they have a, a six-inch move, so there's a decent tar charge. I think the palace guard can take the dogs and take that objective while this one will go empty. I I don't see the dragon lasting long enough to get over there, um, but we do have another dragon on the loose, so that's good. Uh, here in the center, the Dracon riders, they take a Hersha in the flank and the king back into the front. That's going to be enough to kill them. We just didn't have our support here and our heal. Um, and we were just sort of split out, and they did a great job of just like isolating our pieces. I, I thought they, I thought they played a great game here with a with a really tough list. And it also brings up a great point at this point of the game to to bring up um, what I say as far as like tournament mind frame goes when you're playing tournaments. You're always looking for points. You're always looking for points. You're not going to win every battle, but to win the war, to win the tournament, you got to be able to get points in the battle. So you, it can't be a complete, absolute decimation. You you have to get any points you can. And Kings of War is a type of game where, um, given you know given the scoring system depending on on the tournament there there's a way to get points it's really hard to to just completely get zero in a game so you always got to think of that like a three game tournament five game tournament four game whatever every po every point matters every single point you can get counts and you got to always be looking to make sure that you're maximizing the points even if it's a complete annihilation i know there was a game um at keystone where I'm like, oh my god, I have two characters left, and that was it. But I still got points from it, and it really definitely matters in, in, in the overall. Uh, so yeah, th that's a little side note for tournament play. And that tournament point <laughs> that tournament point was brought to you by Diet Coke. Anyway, uh, moving on. Yeah, that's just an overshot of the board. Yeah, the Dracon Riders are gone, and his dragon is able, or his Chimera, is able to face our dragon. So, that's a standoff. Um, I don't really like the options of going in there. I think our dragon might be able to pop them on one turn. But, that just leaves us in a bad spot. We got a Hersha that will lock us down. So, we gotta get, we gotta do our best to, uh, to get out of there. This, this, we feel this token's lost, but there is still a fight on this left side. Um, so, so we got to do. We need to position, and it just so happens this herge is out of line of sight of that dragon too. So that is just well placed, well placed combats. Over here, yep, a lot of wounds from the fallen, and I think we pop. I don't think we snake eyes, snake eyes this. 
I'm not 100% sure. But over here, the king's kind of struggling on these archers. Only got him up to 12 wounds. Um, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> never, never mind. Uh, so what we decided to do is we we know it's turn 5 now, so we're just going to try to roadblock um, these Bloodsworn from getting over here. It, it puts him in an interesting position because here's his dragon. He could easily claim this marker, but there's two other markers that need to be claimed on the left side. Uh, and Herja can't claim it, so... Uh, it sets up a nice little little thing for us to hopefully force uh, force them to make some tough decisions. Um, even though they're slaughtering us, <laughs> uh, it, it, we're still looking for those objectives. So we decided to put a mage over here to speed bump the uh, the blood swarm when they go in. They're gonna have to slide over, so they're gonna be even further away from the marker. So that benefits us. And we're bringing our other mage over to hopefully do that in another turn because it'll be turn six. If it doesn't go to turn seven, we might be able to completely deny that marker. Uh, so that's that's the plan we have in set. And, and it's like I said, it's just desperation mode now. We got to get points. Got to get points. Uh, their horde of blood sworn fit neatly in between these two pieces. So three inches on each side, they're going to be able to claim uh, both of those markers. Uh, so yeah. And there was a neat, we had a neat discussion, and it opened my, my eyes up to uh, how good the Fallen actually are. Um, when they are within an inch of a unit, they can actually pivot enough to charge around them, because they're nimble, of course. Um, because their base size isn't actually inches, it's millimeters, and you're an inch away. So, you know, there's, there's just enough space there that you can actually pivot around, which was a pretty neat... Uh, pretty neat thing. Now that I think about it, if these guys are actually millimeters and these have to be 12 inches apart, I have to do the math on that. They might act te technically not be able to get in there, but it, it doesn't matter. It's splitting hairs at this point. Um, so our movement, yeah, we go back into Herja here. We have 10 wounds on our dragon. Uh, I decided to back the palace guard up to try to secure this. I take the dragon over to try to get at the dogs. Uh, they are nimble, so they probably can dodge out of his thing, out of his front arc. But I had to move in a way that this dragon couldn't see this dragon. We had to move in a way that this dragon could see this dragon, and, and Herja was definitely out of range to charge. Um, so that provided them the opportunity that we couldn't breath weapon the dogs, but uh, next turn we should be able to. And they were able to position the dogs out of his arc. Um, over here, I'm not sure what this is showing. Did these guys actually survive this? 19, they would have to be, I think, a three. Three or snake eyes. They might have survived that. I, for some reason, I, I don't I don't remember. They're turn six. They must have survived because there goes the fallen back in. Um, <laughs> which is pretty interesting because that, that uh, marker is right there and they need to get through these guys. Um, so... Yep, Herja comes in to the other mage and these guys, so they decide to uh, try to do the clearing here and and then take their dragon to threaten our dragon. Um, and they move the dogs as such so that they're out of the sight, line of sight of the or arc of the dragon so he can't charge. And Herja goes back into that dragon. And Herja finally cleans up that dragon. Yeah, and with, uh, with Herja killing the dragon... We, we want to keep this unit out from her. I don't know if she kills it on one go, but, you know, just turn five, so turn six in the woods. Turn seven that comes around, then, uh, you know, those guys could be threatened, but uh, we'll see how that works out. So over here, yeah, these guys uh, go in here, go into the mage, and end up killing her. And turn six us. So we position like such, and so our dragon's on the marker here. Um... Uh, we should be able to get the dogs out of there. I think I think this guy's out of range to charge. So he can't charge him. And I don't think he can fly and get close. Well, if he can't get there, I don't think he's within three of the marker either. So this marker is going to be ours, which is awesome. So this marker and this marker, if it doesn't go to turn seven, uh, we'll at least get two markers. We're going to deny it it appears we're going to deny this marker um unless yeah i, I guess his 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 king and chimera will get it um so worst case scenario we we lose four markers to two which is going to be 600 to whatever probably be about we probably get like uh seven eight points eight points i think maybe i, th I think we figured out like we get about eight points out of this tournament if we can just hold those two markers and possibly deny this one. But uh, he was smart with his 
king if if the, if the archer unit holds up one more time um they would be it would be good there so their turn six uh Herja was able to reach their their dragon was not so it basically comes down to um hers is not going to kill her kill our, our our dragon but uh if it goes to turn seven then obviously they're going to contest this marker and I guess that's the last picture I have. So what ended up happening is, uh, so we rolled the turn seven. They tossed me to die to roll it, and of course I rolled for turn seven, and that was a huge swing because they ended up getting. Oh, that's right, they weren't able to get this marker. They they flew the king over on their turn six, um, but their turn seven allowed them to get this marker. So it went from them having three markers to us having two, which is as close to a draw as, as we could possibly get F goes from there to them getting four markers to r1 so i think we only got three points this game but you know three points we had 24 from the first round um i mean that was just such a huge swing if we get the points for this i mean we're we would be looking really really pretty i mean even if it was a draw um but yeah that's that's how it goes down you know it, that's why i'm not a big fan of turn seven uh, um yeah, there is. You, you need to plan ahead, and there's that that whole strategy involved. But I mean, really, one die roll, one single die roll, changes game from being a theoretically a draw to um, a massive blowout because of one single die roll. That's unfortunate. I don't like how I don't like a game being swung like that. I mean, and Al and I we discussed this. I mean, we were getting blown out. Uh, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind we were getting blown out, but um, that's the beauty of Kings of War, right? I mean, it's about objectives. It's about securing objectives and getting victory points for it. And yeah, if you lose a lot of your force, but you've completed your objectives, you know, the mission's a success. Um, in that case, you know, we played for that and, you know, just rolling that turn seven just thought just dominated us um but it was a really fun game and and these guys this is hell's crucible from if you if you've been around my uh my channel for a while um even though i've mixed it up with these guys <laughs> with these guys a lot nerd hammer versus hell's crucible um always great guys always fun to play always put you to a challenge i mean um they they always <laughs> it's always a good game and uh yeah and this this was no no exception i mean it was just it was it was a lot of fun and very tactical and two pretty pretty hard lists i i feel um probably the two two toughest lists there if if i had to if i had to guess um but yeah it was a fun game and uh you know round three is coming up real soon and we got another another barn burner in that game so uh stick around and thanks for watching guys we'll catch you on the next one